We have a vehicle here that has drivability issues, poor performance under heavy acceleration and load. We've come to the pump to check the voltage at the pump. This is available voltage. We're going to actually back probe the electrical connector to the pump, both the positive and the negative terminal. Once we energize the circuit, we've only got 9.9 .9 volts available to the pump. This will cause a drivability issue. It will slow the pump down. The pump will not be able to make the volume needed for the system to operate properly. Low voltage of the pump is created by a high resistance in the circuit. In order to find this resistance, we'll do voltage drop testing. In any automotive electrical circuit, you'll have source voltage. This is tested at the battery. To get true source voltage, you'll need to check with the vehicle running and the charging system operating properly. Available voltage is tested at the component you're diagnosing. In this case, we're testing the fuel pump. Total voltage drop will be the difference between source voltage and available voltage. To assure proper performance, the fuel pump circuit should have no more than one volt total voltage drop. The total voltage drop is determined by adding the voltage drop on the positive and the negative side of the circuit. In order to do a proper voltage drop test, we'll go back to the battery and get our source voltage and ground. As you can see, we've got 13.7 volts. Now we need to determine where the voltage loss is, creating the pump problem. We're gonna do that by testing each side of the circuit, both positive and negative. I do this by having long leads that I attach to the battery. That will give me my source voltage and ground back at the pump to do my testing. With a long test lead attached to the positive side of the battery, be mindful of where you place this lead. We could have a dangerous spark. Along with our test leads, we'll need a digital volt ohm meter, a pin to back probe the connector, and also a vehicle wiring schematic. We're gonna do our voltage drop test on the positive side of the circuit to the fuel pump first. In order to do this, we'll set our voltmeter to the 20 volt DC scale. Then we'll connect our positive lead of the voltmeter to our positive lead coming from the battery. Then we'll take the negative lead of the voltmeter and back probe the positive terminal on the pump. Without the circuit energized or the pump running, you will see battery voltage on your meter. The meter is finding a ground path through the windings of the pump, thus you're reading battery voltage. With the pump running, our voltmeter is showing the total loss of voltage in the positive side of the circuit. At first, voltage drop testing may be a little confusing. But what voltage drop is, it shows the difference in the voltage between one connection and the second connection. The voltmeter is designed to measure the difference between each terminal. For instance, if we take our voltmeter and we attach the leads to the positive and the negative terminals of the battery, this will show us battery voltage. That is the difference between the positive and the negative terminal of the battery. In this case, we have our lead coming from the positive terminal of the battery to our voltmeter, and then we're back probing the positive lead at the pump. This is actually showing the difference between those two connections. In most cases, a 0.5 or less loss in voltage on either side of the circuit will not create a drivability issue in the fuel pump. If we were to find an excessive voltage drop on the positive side of the circuit, then we would have to look at the wiring schematic for that particular vehicle and segment that circuit to determine where the voltage drop is created. On the Toyota vehicle that we're working on today, we can segment the positive side of the circuit. The wire, according to the wiring schematic, goes directly from the pump back to the fuse box. And we can move our positive lead that is at the battery now to that connection. And that would segment that part of the circuit. That would show if our voltage drop is in that area. And then we will continue going back towards the battery with our lead to determine what section is actually creating the voltage drop. Since we've determined that the positive side of the circuit is functioning properly, We'll now move to the negative side of the circuit to do our testing. We'll take the negative lead of the voltmeter and attach to the negative lead coming from the battery. We'll take the positive lead of our voltmeter and we'll back probe the negative terminal on the pump. With our test leads connected on the negative side of the circuit and the circuit not being energized, your voltmeter should show zero voltage. With the pump running, our testing on the negative side of the circuit shows a 3.5 volt drop. This is excessive. Now that we've determined that the excessive voltage loss is on the negative side of the circuit, we'll reference the vehicle wiring schematic to determine where our next testing is. 
According to the wiring schematic on this particular vehicle, the ground circuit runs directly from the pump to a location on the chassis. Because of the fault in the ground side of the electrical circuit for the fuel pump, replacing the pump will not solve the drivability issue. Some of the more obvious things to look for that would be creating this excessive voltage drop would be a loose or corroded ground connection at the chassis or a chafed or corroded wiring. Some technicians would argue that they could do the same testing with an ohm meter. The problem with that is, using an ohm meter, we cannot energize the circuit. Without the circuit being energized, a corroded connector may not show up. Using a voltage drop test with the circuit energized and the load operating, this will show any high resistance faults in the circuit.